Welcome to podcast 6.3, the last section of chapter 6. Uh, in this chapter, we've learned about covalent bonds, how they work, how to uh, name molecules that are bonded covalently. Then we spent some time with Lewis dot structures. And now what we're going to do is kind of tie it all together with the Lewis dot structures and the fact that these bonds are being shared to come up with uh, molecular shapes of molecules. Because as you're going to see, it plays a large role in the properties of these molecules. I have five shapes up here that are the five that I want you to know and we'll go over exactly what they are uh, in a little while as you can see them rotating around there now if you look um, you'll see the little dots right in there see those ones right there those are free electrons you can see them over there and then uh, the, the sticks of course just represent bonds so this all has to do with this thing called Vesper theory valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and if you think about an electron cloud Imagine eight electrons on the outside in the valence shell, and what are they doing to each other? Well, hopefully you're thinking they're repelling each other. And so that repulsion is what gives the molecules their three-dimensional shape. So Vesper theory is simply predicting the shapes based on the repulsion of these valence electrons. And the nice thing is, is if you can draw a Lewis dot structure, which you can, you can predict these five shapes simply based on the Lewis dot structure. Um, but there are a couple things that you need to know. Mostly you need to know about the bonded pairs and the non-bonded pairs. Because the shape is dependent upon uh, what those valence electrons are doing uh, around that central atom. Are they bonded? Or are they unbonded? Because that's going to make a little bit of difference. And just as you can imagine, uh, the idea is that electrons are negatively charged, right? And since they are negatively charged, they're going to want to be as far apart as they can be from each other. Now, the tough thing about this is we're drawing Lewis dot structures on a two-dimensional surface, but we have to try and think three-dimensional. And that's what I like about these little animations that I pulled off a website somewhere, is they kind of give you a really good idea for how they are in, in a three-dimensional space. And so that's going to be your challenge, is to kind of try and uh, ma imagine... Uh, the shape. And then the last thing about this is when we're naming these molecules, we have to really focus on this. Those unshared electron pairs, they influence the shape, okay? But they're not visible in the model. Now, they're, they're visible in these little animations I have up here, but when we build our models in our lab, we're not going to worry about those unbonded pairs. But we do need to realize that those unbonded pairs um, uh, influence the shape. And they, they influence it to a, a certain degree. So what I've got for you next is I want to show you these uh, structures that I want you to get in your brain. There's only five of them, so it, it'll be pretty easy to name them. And uh, there's some odd names, but I think you'll get it. So here they are. This is probably a good time to pause the video, and you might even want to sketch this picture out, or I should say these pictures out, because these are important things. We're going to do a little uh, group activity where we're going to go over the names, but I'm just going to briefly go over this uh, while you're sketching. Uh, you can listen to me, or you can just pause and then wait for me to talk about it. So here we go. With this first one right here, this tetrahedron, we've got one central atom. In our case, it's going to be carbon a lot. And then usually we're, you know, with these models we build as a hydrogen. Now, again, the challenge is we're talking three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface, okay? A tetrahedron shape, tetra meaning four, right? That is as far apart as those uh, electrons could be. And this angle, and I couldn't make a curve, but if, if it would be better if it was curved like that. That angle right there is 109.5, and that's something I want you to kind of commit to your brain, all right? That a tetrahedron has 109.5 uh, degrees. So that's, that's with four bonds. Now let's say, for example, one of these uh, bonds, or one of these, I don't know, of valence electrons on the central atom isn't bonded. Like, for example, let's say I had this was an N and this was an H. This would be ammonia, 
All right. Now, as you guys know, you've got to have an octet, right? So this represents two electrons right here, two electrons right there, two electrons right there, and then, of course, these two, all right? So this shape is still in the shape of uh, a tetrahedron if you were to imagine, right? If you were to imagine this bond coming right up here, right? It would be just like this one over here. But when we talk about shapes, we don't include the, the non-bonded electrons. So this is a little pyramid, this thing right here. Okay, it's a pyramid. I don't know. I, I, I can't draw a pyramid three-dimensionally. I just don't have the skills. But anyways, it's a pyramid, and if you were to look at the bottom of it, it would look like a triangle. So it's called trigonal pyramidal. And I'll show you models in these classes, and we'll play with them so it's a little, you'll get to see them in three dimensions. And this angle right here is 106.5. Now, notice it's still in the same shape as that one, but this angle is uh, less than the 109.5. Can you think of any reason why that is? Well, did you? Well, here's the situation. When you have a bonded pair of electrons right here, like these guys right along here, they're kind of locked in between the two nuclei of, of that atom. All right. But what happens is when we have an unbonded pair, this electron cloud or this unbonded pair takes up a greater amount of space than a bonded pair. And so what you have is it kind of forces these other bonds... Oops, that's not what I want to do. It forces those other bonds to bend down more. All right? It forces them to bend down. Kind of odd, right? Well, let's let's look at the next one I want you to, do, to uh, see. This bent shape, all right? Look at that. There's our friend, water, right? Now, this is really tough thing. Again, the electrons are still taking the place in this tetrahedron. They're still taking place in that spot, all right? But there's two pair of electrons. Notice the angle right here. Look at that. It's even less than the 106.5. Why? Well, think about it. Those electrons are free, so they're taking up more space. And those electrons are free. They're taking up more space. So they're really squishing this angle right here even more so. I hope that makes sense. I know it seems kind of weird. It's you know it's, uh, it's hard to imagine on this two-dimensional surface. But we'll play with these models and you'll get a chance to see it. All right. Uh, here's another one. The fourth one. Trigonal planar. Like boron trifluoride. Okay. Now, boron is an exception. It doesn't need... Um, all right, a little phone interruption there. Anyways, so here's boron trifluoride, and this is one of those molecules that actually has an exception to the octet rule. It turns out boron only needs six uh, valence electrons, So, but we're not going to really worry about that. What we're going to look at, though, is uh, the shape of this thing. Now... I, it would be great if I could turn it on its side because you would see a bump there and a bump there and a bump there, all right? And you would see uh, just some lines, okay? Because it's on a plane. It's a flat plane. And so this is still a triangle, right? So it's trigonal, but since it's, if you look at it sideways, it's on a plane. It's called trigonal planar. Okay, so we have four shapes, tetrahedron, trigonal pyramid, right, bent, trigonal planar, and last but not least, a linear shape. Something like what you're breathing out right now, CO2, all right? And so any type of linear shape is going to be 180. Oh, I didn't talk about this one. This is 120 because... What's a three? You know, a circle divided by three sections, three hundred sixty is one twenty, right? So there you go. So those are the five shapes I want you to commit to your brain. Uh, I would like you to know their angles also, and 
get those drawings in your journal. We will have a little activity where we'll get to play with these a little more, and, and hopefully it'll make sense to you. 